Good afternoon. Are you feeling lonely because you're single? This is episode number 736 and the title is Are you <laughs> feeling lonely because you're single? Here's the perfect time to love. And I'll explain what I mean by that and get into some details and some tips of what you can do to be more, less lonely, more loving. But before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about and why I do these talks every single day. My name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't figured that out yet. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a relationship attraction expert helping do that, and also because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. I help men too, but usually men aren't willing to listen, so this is for everybody. Um, and I started doing these talks over two years ago, and it was because of my passion for this work. I started doing these talks about uh, two, two and a half years ago now, and they've been daily for most of that time. And today we're at episode number 736. And the title today is, Are You Feeling Lonely Being Single? And this is the best time to love. And that may sound contradictory and may be counterintuitive, but I will explain. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. on Facebook Live, so they're interactive. If you're watching Facebook Live, you can interact, give me comments, questions as we go along. If you're watching in the replay or watching, you can still interact that way. If you're watching on YouTube, you can comment there as well because it goes both places. I'll explain all of that at the back end. Or I should say, I'll, go into, I'll explain more detail at the back end with the links and everything. So let's jump in, shall we? Um, this actually is following up from a meme I posted about a couple of hours ago on Facebook, which was this thing about being single is the best time to work on yourself. Because the thing is, or I should say, when you're single or when you're alone, sorry, when you're single, it's the best time to discover who you are. It's probably better way of putting it. Let me set up a premise first. For most people, I don't have a survey to say exactly how many, but for most people, being in a relationship oftentimes is a way to avoid facing themselves. If you've been in relationships in the past, if you're in a relationship now, actually if you're watching this, you're probably single because this, this title would have, would have attracted you. If you're in a relationship, it may not have attracted you, but that's okay. If you're single and you look back at your past relationships and I look back at my own past relationships, I know some of those relationship choices I made were to accommodate a focus. They were to take my attention off of something else like myself to be in that relationship. In fact, a couple of those relationships in particular I'm very aware of were a mix of what I could get from the relationship and also not focusing on my own stuff. Now, that may be true for you as well. Maybe it's not, but I suspect you know, somewhere in the background of your past relationships, there was an inkling of both of those in there. Because for most of us, we don't look at relationships as a place where we contribute as much. Although if you're watching my broadcast, you've learned that it's very important to do that. So that's one thing. The second part I want to speak to is that sometimes being single is somehow frowned upon, especially as an adult. If you're not in a relationship and if you're not married, for, heaven forbid if you're not married, there's something wrong because you should have been married. You should be in a relationship, you should, all these shoulds. Because being single is not a good thing. It's not healthy, it's not contributing to society or something. There's a lot of that junk being thrown around out there and it's, none of it's true. But it's kind of this judgment that shows up for a lot of people. So somehow being single is a bad thing. There's something wrong with you or there's something that you failed at or you just end up being lonely and, and alone. Well. I'm gonna call bullshit and all that stuff. Being single is a choice that a lot of people don't make consciously, to be honest. Most people choose single, sorry, most people don't choose singlehood as a conscious choice. They actually end up being single because they haven't chosen what they want in a relationship, or they haven't found the one they want to be with, or they've just failed in a relationship in the past. All of the above, I believe, comes back to one thing, which is we haven't learned how to love ourselves, and we haven't learned how to really honor and respect who we are. So my title was intentional in saying about it's the best time to love when you're single. But it's not about love out there, except in a moment I'll explain why it is that way, <laughs> just to contradict. So it's, but it is the best time to love yourself. Because the thing is, when you're not in a relationship, then you don't have to worry about loving anybody else. Ultimately, in, you know, when you're in a relationship, you're supposed to love your partner. It's supposed to, because some people don't do that. But when you're single, there isn't anybody who's immediately in your, your space to be loved, except the one in the mirror. Men especially don't go in for this stuff, but I know women don't to a degree either. They, we're, we are wired, programmed, in, um, informed 
trained to think that we get love from out there. And so we won't feel loving because there's nobody in our lives. That again is bullshit. We are, well, we're loving beings first of all. Human beings are loving kind people naturally unless we get some sort of training or indoctrination or abuse that puts us in a place where we don't love as much. That's another conversation for another time. But to be loving as an individual is, na is a natural instinct for us as human beings. Care and compassion are innate for us all. But again, some people get raised or trained or educated in a way that doesn't do that. But generally, as a default, when babies are born, they're loving. We as adults are loving if we don't disconnect that energy. So staying connected is a key. So being single is an important time, one, to be loving, and two, to love ourselves. Because when we start to learn about who we really are, that's when the real work begins. That's when the transformation happens. It's when the opportunity to be a better person presents itself. Because when you're alone, there's less to distract you from being in a relationship. Now, I'm not going to go the other way. Uh, there are, there's a whole other piece about relationship where it's going to be the, the growing edge. But for most people, they don't look at it that way. So I'm focusing right now on this talk about being single and about being alone. Because those aren't the same thing, by the way. <laughs> That's another topic as well. But being alone and being single is a powerful place to get to know who you really are. Because there's nobody in there to distract you. you look in the mirror, you see yourself. There's nobody standing next to you, you're not in a relationship. So the freedom to do what you want to do, to be with yourself, to actually explore things you may not have explored, is even easier when you're on, on your own. Because you're not worrying about judgments from that person who's close to you. Not that you should be anyway, but that's, again, another topic. I'm putting out these different threads which may come back to haunt me, we'll see. So learning how to be a better person is easier when you're single, as I mentioned, and learning how to really embrace and love and appreciate who you are is easiest when you are alone. Unfortunately, many people who are alone, who are single, are so focused on attracting a relationship, or so focused on getting to a relationship, that they're not focusing on themselves. Most, it seems like a lot of people when they're single, their predominant focus is, I'm looking for love, I've got to find that person, I've got to be in a relationship. Rather than saying, I like who I am. I'm learning to love who I am. I like to spend time being single. Taking myself to the movies. Taking myself, out, taking myself out to dinner, which I do as a single person. But most men, most single people don't do that as much. They're more focused on socializing, mixing and meeting people. They can be in a relationship as soon as possible. I believe differently, as you may have guessed, which is that when you're alone, is a time to savor who you are, to respect who you are, and to learn to love that person that lives inside your body. I don't mean, no, no, <laughs> that's gonna be silly. No, stay with, stay with the point. So the reality is that you can be, in fact, a, a very, um, that's what I'm looking for, a very self-expressed, a very fulfilled and a very loving person without anybody else around. The freedom you have when you're single is a powerful gift that most people ignore. The freedom you have when you're alone is that you don't have anybody else to be accountable to. Except, I mean, society is general, yes. But you can be, you have to be accountable to yourself. So your desire to dance, to play, to celebrate, to sing, to study how to be a better person is all available to you. It's a gift being single. Yes, I'm saying it that way. It's a gift being single when you choose to unpack the gift and discover what presence really is about. Oh, that was a bad one. <laughs> what presence is all about, but it's, it's true. When we are present to ourselves, when we are present to that beingness of who we are, there's a gift in there that you never, may never discover before. So I'm recommending, yes, I'm recommending being single is a good thing when you choose it consciously. When you choose to be alone, not lonely, and choose to be single and healthy in that choice, that's when life can become a whole new adventure. And when you start to spend time with yourself and you honor and respect yourself so you don't go looking for love out there all the time, first of all, love will try to start to find you, which is kind of a side effect. And secondly, you will become more discerning about the choice you make about love. So your relationship standards will be raised. Your choice whether to enter a relationship will be raised. You're actually more discerning so you can say yes or no more easily. The other part as well is that you start to discover how amazing you really are. 
We start to love yourself, appreciate yourself, and start to learn and how to become a better person. You start to discover the world treats you differently too. So not only does love seek you out, but the world will seek you out from another place because you've changed who you are. You've raised your own standards. You've become a better human being. As is true for most of my talks, I get passionate about certain things. This is one of the reasons I get things I get passionate about. To be strong in yourself, to be trusting in yourself, to honor, respect, and love who you are as a human being. It's like the vows in the wedding, the wedding vows, to honor, respect, sorry, to honor and honor and, I don't know the most words, <laughs> so I'm trying to say things, but the qualities in the wedding, wedding vows, that was bad, to love, honor, and respect, in sickness and in health, to death to us part, that old thing, do that, or say that to you and self in the mirror and see what happens. When you start to apply those qualities to your own life, your life will transform. And the opportunities for relationship then become much higher quality choices. You'll be more discerning and you'll be less willing to just jump into any relationship. It's a lesson I had to learn the hard way, so I'm giving you the shortcut. If you're someone who's been through marriage and divorce and you're feeling maybe you've, you've been wounded or you've been hurt, I understand how you feel. But I'm telling you this is true for you too. Doesn't matter what you've been through. If it was an amazing marriage with your family, kids, all those different things, it's still a powerful teaching to learn how to be honorable of who you are when you're single. To love and respect yourself and to discover how amazing you really are. Because you are really amazing. Which leads me to a couple of things. This is a good time when you are single to take time for yourself to maybe, say, pick up new hobbies or new practices, new explorations to discover how amazing you really are. Maybe discover a whole new creative outlet. Do this gently. Because what I'm offering you may be transformational to your own experience, and it may not be something you just go, right, no problem, I'll just jump into that. But if you take steps gently to explore, to do what is basically one step into a new direction, see if it lines up. If it doesn't, try a different direction. Explore who you can be as a single person, as a whole person, as a truly individual and authentic person that's when life can change for the better. It's one reason I've been on this path for a long time. There's all the classes and teachings I've studied, teachings I've been in and studies I've taken, completely that, that's given me this ability to teach this from the way I do. It's also why I have been putting together this course called Coming Home to Yourself, which I'm gonna look up. Excuse me, let me back up a second. I'm gonna plug a couple of things just so you know. So if you're not interested in this, don't listen. <laughs> But I, invite, I think you might be interested. If this has made sense to you so far, this one had more sense to you. This is why I created the Coming Home to Yourself course. It's a group program that I have been talking about for a while. I haven't launched it yet because I'm waiting for more people to join in because I'm building a selective group to be the, the, um, the pioneers of this, group, of this course. It's called Coming Home to Yourself. And it really, in, in other words, it's a self-love, self-support, and self-discovery process or journey that will be eye-opening, heart-opening, and transformational to your own life. There'll be a link in the comments, you can check it out and I'll also tell you, you well, and also let you know, you can message me if you want more information too. But it's really what I'm become fundamentally about is helping people learn to discover themselves, coming home to themselves. Because the ultimate thing is, if you wanna be in an amazing relationship, you must have a good relationship with the one who lives inside. That's kind of my message more and more nowadays, as you may have discovered. Secondly, Secondly, thirdly, secondly, I think it was secondly. I'm letting you know as, an, as a reminder, in case you've been following me the last few days, I've been talking about my um, 38th anniversary, 38 minute discovery, sorry, 38th anniversary celebration, single 38 minute coaching sessions, pay what you want offering that I put out this week. That offer ends tomorrow. Tomorrow, Saturday, which is week, a week from my anniversary. So the 30th anniversary was June 1st. Tomorrow's June, June 8th, which is a week from then. So I'm basically saying that's the end of that. So if you want to get in on that offer for a single session, for a pay what you want prize, for 38 minutes of coaching, direct from me to you privately, that's available from now until tomorrow. Um, in fact, I'm gonna close it out at tomorrow's Facebook Live, which will be at 5 p.m. So 5 p.m. tomorrow is when it ends. If you wanna grab one of those, I'll put a link in the comments as well for the contact form, so you can send me a message that way, or you can simply just reach out to me over social media. I believe you can have what you want, 
and I believe that being single and learning to discover how amazing you are is one of the ways to get there, which is why I talk about this the way I do. I think that's it. You got some understandings, you got some teachings. Oh, there was one thing, oh, there, was one, there was one thing in there. <laughs> one of the things about being single that people forget, besides the fact that they forget to love themselves, is they forget how to be able to serve and give to others. For a lot of people, when they're single, they get so closed up, and it's in, actually almost contraindicative, contra counterintuitive, <laughs> say it that way, is they're so focused on looking for love or ignoring love that they don't know how to be able to be single and to give love freely. So one of the things I recommend you do, again, if you're single and if you're learning how to love yourself more, which I recommend highly, thumbs up for that, and I've got a self-love practice for that. I'll put the link in the comments too. Um, there's a self-love practice that I recommend highly because it helps you get that place of really tuning into that love inside yourself. The next piece is how do you serve and love in the world? And the key word is serve. Because it's almost the thing about being a more effective person is how do you contribute to those around you? And it could be a service. It could be sharing. It could be being nice. It could be being good-mannered. It could be all sorts of things. What is it for you? How can you be more loving? Because part of this being single is not to be separate from society, but how to be in society in a way that contributes and makes a difference. And by the way, the side effect of that is it makes you more attractive. Pissed. <laughs> secret, secret. <laughs> because then when you do that, you'll learn how to, you actually start attracting more love, though, as I mentioned earlier. But you'll start to raise the quality of what you attract because by being in places where you give and you serve and you make a difference that way, your love becomes magnetic. That's a powerful tool, by the way. All right, I think I've given you enough to, to play with for now. I'll put the three links in the comments that I've now realized I mentioned. And if you want to go deeper in this, I recommend you check out my offerings and also reach out to me for more support because this is a game changer for some people. Maybe you already know this, maybe you already figured it out, but a lot of people haven't, so you let them know about this. This is kind of a paradigm shift for some people who've never seen this before. I think that's made the point. I don't want to go on too long because I'll keep these fairly short. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, this is my Facebook Live, as I mentioned, 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page, which is barryselby.author, and also onto my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to that. And there's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. Again, I'll put the links in the comments for the three things I mentioned. If you want help, you can message me or fill out one of those forms or check out one of those pages and get the support you desire. If you have any thoughts about this broadcast, you can put them below, um, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, either way it works fine. And uh, I hope this has stirred up some thoughts for you. If you're single, I hope this has given you some inspiration, maybe some hope, and certainly some things to think about. And as I said before, this is my daily broadcast, so I'll be back in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time with something new and different, we'll see what it is. But I thank you for watching, and I appreciate you being with me as always. And with that, I recommend that you consider applying, um, implementing as the word, some things I suggested. So with that, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Bye.